What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to the channel and we continue today with the Pro Cyclist here in Season 3. I'm repping, as you can see, the Gang of Youths t-shirt here today. Uh, it's not a sponsored video, but guys, check out their latest album. So, so good. I saw them live last week. Anyway, we started our career at Total Energies in the last episode. No wins, no podiums. Let's change that today. And the place we are starting is the Volta Algarve. Five stages in Portugal, always a fun early season race. We then have a couple of French classics, hilly ones that really suit us. And then Strada Bianca will conclude today's episode. So plenty of stages on the table that we could be competitive in. And Algarve this year starts in Albufeira, a place I've been in real life actually, with a sprinter stage. Stage two, more for the climbers, that's too difficult for us, I would suggest. Stage three is a time trial, stage four for the sprinters, and stage five, very hilly. That could be the stage that suits us best. It looks like Danny Van Poppel, Jasper Sturven, now for Lotto Sudal, of course, and Phil Bauhaus are the favourites today. But for our team, we have the likes of Daniel Loss as our teammate for the first time, James Shaw, Ellie Gasper, Mark Donovan, so the two Brits on the team are here as well. Really exciting squad. Let's get it. And it's only a minus two for us today, but let's take a quick look at the start list. I was going to say no Wout van Aert, please, but I can already see we've got Tade Pogacar and Remco Evenepoel here as well. So uh, I'd probably rather have just Wout van Aert than those two here. Pretty difficult already. I've also noticed that our old team, Yolo Kometa, are here. Let's try and beat them. So why not? Let's try and steal some points at this intermediate sprint. We've got the jump on a couple of riders here, and I think we are actually going to win the intermediate sprint as there's no breakaway left. All right, we'll take it. So just 5K to go. We are in a pretty good position here. Joao Almeida is to the front. There's Phil Bauhaus. I think I'll try and switch to his wheel if I can. He is following Mate Mohoric, but these guys surely going too early. There's still 3K left. We are fighting so hard for this position. Maybe Rui Oliveira, a better wheel at this stage. And I'm out of red. I'm literally done uh, with 1.5 case go. Such is the absurd rhythm under the Flamme Rouge. Let's try and sprint to the line. Where can we finish today? Nowhere. It is going to be Phil Bauhaus. That was his lead out getting victory for him here. I think we're going to be just outside the top 10. So 13th place to kick things off. Let's try and improve in the next one. But to be honest, as I alluded to, the Auto de Foyer, 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 Auto de Foyer, we'll go with that. Uh, I think it's too difficult for us. So we're going to be, well, against Pogaccio, Almeida and Avenipal, it's definitely going to be too difficult for us. I think our best tactic could be to lose time today so we can go in the breakaways, particularly on that stage five. And I did think about trying to join the breakaway and I kind of regret it because the greatest hair in cycling, Daniel Oss is up the road, but also Lorenzo Fortunato, 77 mountain and 77 hill has been allowed up the roads here. So I can already see 40 k to go. We are struggling today with all the climbing. I think Mark Donovan is officially the leader, but Ellie Gasper, the Frenchman, on a brilliant, brilliant day, plus three, taking him to 78 mountain, 79 hill. I'm going to protect him for as long as possible. Then I'll drop back and just lose time today so we can go in the breakaways, like I mentioned. Yeah, this stage has been kind of crazy. There are 32 riders. This is the peloton right here. 32 riders left, the breakaway are caught, we're still here clinging on and our team and myself, we look absolutely awful regarding our energy. Yep, so there we go, we are now done for the day. Let's drop back and lose plenty of minutes so we can go in the future breakaways and look at this, Michael Storer attacking over the top there, our guys don't get caught out. So it's actually Mikhail Kwiatkowski leading Joao Almeida and then Michael Storer as we come under the Flam Rouge, Van Sabenen, Pogaccia, those guys are further back, so is our boy Ellie Gass. Bear, but I think is that Simon Carr flying through into the final few hundred meters who is going to win the Queen stage of the Volta Algarve. What a victory for Simon Carr. Only 76 mountain, 74 hill. He's beaten some big, big names today. What an epic stage that is. I remember that stage in the Uno X career. Go watch it if you haven't already, that entire series. But um, it was Tobias Hull and Johansson fighting for victory for us then. Ellie Gasper losing a minute. Not too bad, just outside the top 10 on the stage. I'd like to take most of the credit for his result right there. But we were 63rd, nine minutes down. Mission accomplished. And next up, the TT. I think this is going to be Ramco versus Tade. Well, certainly not expecting any type of result today. But we are in the final kilometre of our time time trial let's drop this maybe just to 99 as we approach the line and we're already 124 down not even half the field have finished yet 
and I thought Remco was going to take the stage, but instead it is the home favourite Joao Almeida, six seconds clear of his former teammates, even though they didn't get on too well with that Giro d'Italia, of course. For us though, Mark Donovan, a top 10 for him, but the guy we needed to do well, of course, Eli Gesbert was absolutely nowhere. He finished even further down than us. He is now almost three minutes down in the GC while Joao Almeida takes the lead. And a sprint stage up next. These are the two stages I'm looking forward to. We're free to go in the breakaway. Could we try something here? Maybe not, but particularly stage five, the breakaway looks like an option here though. Could we snag a top 10 in the sprints? So I am up the road trying to capitalize on this opportunity. We have to join these breakaways. Not a particularly strong group here. We'll see what happens. So I will try and come through and win this intermediate sprint, which we are going to do with absolute ease to be fair. So I did go ahead and win the other intermediate sprints and KOM sprint heads today. Let's finish it off with the final intermediate sprint victory as well. There we go. And that is going to put us sixth place provisionally before the stage finished today. So 11k to go. We are still up the roads in this group. Only 30 seconds is our gap to the hard chasing peloton. There they are. And I think they are going to catch us. I'd love to try a last minute escape attempt. And so I think it is now or never. As soon as this rider pulls over, we are going to attack away and really try and create some separation. Can we go to aero position these guys? are still on our wheel let's just go like this and see if we can drop them okay but now i am done we have four k to go we're still in this group i'm absolutely cooked i need to conserve some energy here i'll follow uh this portuguese guy and i think we are going to be caught with three k to go heartbreaking stuff it's not going to be a breakaway stage victory here today let's just cruise into the line at 85 who is going to take the victory it looks like Jasper Sturven in the perfect perfect position Phil Bauhaus he slips dreams he slingshots past but Jasper Sturven is strong enough to hold on for victory here today and we have risen into the top 10 in the green jersey or the sprint jersey competition I don't think we're going to win it but um, we can definitely try and aim for maybe a top five or even a top three ranking here and this is the stage I have been waiting for really looking forward to this basically looks like an Arzen classic to me because hills all through the final half of the stage I'm going to potentially join the breakaway and see what happens and so I am currently trying to join the breakaway but I also want to take this intermediate sprint so I'll up it to 90 there you go we're now fourth place in that competition and it looks like we are going to be in the day's breakaway Johnny Brandao and Lorenzo Fortunato are here too and the group has now risen to 11 riders in tow so I think we have the likes of Carlos Besson core here now riding for a Portuguese team also Schlegel he's a pretty good puncher I think also Eric Fesser our former teammate he's definitely a danger in this group and the final intermediate sprint of the race we will take that as well and we are now third place and so the climbing begins according to my race director I am trying to go for the best climber classification today we have five points from the previous stage but we are nine points away from Michael Stora Simon Carr as well. They're not in this group though, so let's try and go for the KOM jersey. Right, and here we go. Just one kilometre left. I have opened it up on the front. Have I gone a little early though? Let's try and hold on for first place or at least some points. We do get some points. Third place there. We're up to nine points. Here we go again then. This time I'll try and take the wheel of my opponent coming into the final 500. Let's give our all now to go for first place at this KOM. We're going to have to settle for second place though, but all of these points are adding up we're up to second so Yolo Kometa have used Derek Fetter he has gone they're using Maggi now on the front and I'm struggling for energy I think this could be a preview of the finish line not too sure but we look at our energy guys look at our energy it's a second cat climb it's so crucial we pick up some points at least there I think we're going to be third place in the end which is going to put us let's take a look we are first place but only three ahead of Lorenzo Fortunato who looks stronger than us today and I think we're in trouble here guys we're with Silver second group on the road but up the road it's Lorenzo Fortunato up the road with Portuguese cycling legend Johnny Brandao and we're about to be caught by the peloton and what we need now is to hope that this fast chasing peloton is going to catch the guys up the road so Fortunato can't take the points he needs to overhaul us Oh, but the guys in this group seem to have stopped. How frustrating. I'm going to have to go myself. I think Fortunato has this jersey in the bag. 
I think I mentioned beating Yolo at this race. Look at Fortunato. He's too good for us, man. And he is going to win the KOM jersey. Our team leaders, Mark Donovan and Ellie Gasper, are completely done. We have a little group up the road trying to uh, mix it up a little. Mikhail Kwiatkowski going for the win here. Trying to put Joao Almeida under pressure. But Lorenzo Fortunato is trying to hold on from this breakaway. What an effort by Lorenzo at the front. But I think he's going to be caught. So Fortunato was caught in the end. Quirso was caught as well. And I think, is it going to be Toons? I think Dylan Toons will win the stage. But Joao Almeida is going to win the Volta Algarve in a really exciting race. That was a really fun battle. I cannot lie. What a race this is. Super, super difficult. In the end, Almeida, Quirso and Toons, the only rider within a minute. And look at the time gaps we have here. Just in five stages. Remember, we finished outside the top 10 with Gasper in the GC with fifth in that sprint competition and second in that KOM competition. Yolo Kometa, uh, they come back to haunt us. Nonetheless, some big points here heading towards level 18. And so we head to France now. The Four Nardesh Classic is first. I am skipping on the Pet Newsblad for these couple of French classics, but they are fun races in their own right. You can see that by the start list, highlighted by Primoz Roglic, surely the favourite for me but this parkour is definitely suits us so I'm feeling hopeful. So one thing I have noticed so far with Total Energies we are having to work for our teammates more which is I guess not surprised we're at the World Tour level now in a World Tour team. We are today officially working for this man right here Ellie Gasper. And oh my word, I said Roglic was a favourite. He is just attacked so early in this race. 74k to go. You'll see him going around that corner, I think, in a moment. There he is, up the roads. He is ahead of the peloton already. What an aggressive ride that is from him. However, not coming off this time around Primoz. And this race is quickly becoming very selective. We have Miguel and Hal Lopez for our care. Samzik here struggling a little, perhaps. We're here with Gaspar still, but our energies are very similar, so I think I might try and go for myself today. And already we're down to just 30 riders in the peloton. This is so selective already, guys. And oh my, to be honest, we're guessing our chances killed by blocks. We've been blocked so many times trying to climb the San Roman de Lerp, but still it's George Bennett on the front. Is he pushing us out the back of this group? Hopefully not. Come on, George, surely you're done. Okay, George is done, but Juan Ayuso certainly isn't done. What a young talent Juan Ayuso so is we can't see him up the road but he is attacking Simon Carr following and myself or Gasper we cannot follow so again guess which attributes it is killing our chances that mountain stat is going to be the bane of me but Ayuso versus Simon Carr for the victory here and Juan Ayuso I think is just going to edge out Simon Carr or is it going to be Simon Carr such a close finish Juan Ayuso defeats Simon Carr to win the Fawn Ardesh Classic really fun race again but a race we just couldn't Really competing. That mountain stat, like I said, 69. We need to increase that ASAP. We finished five minutes down here. But this parkour looks a little friendlier, perhaps. Royal Bernard Drome Classic. Less mountains, more hills. Let's try and go and win this race. Yeah, or not. Again, we get a minus two day. Our early season form has been pretty atrocious. But our leader, Ellie Gasper, or apparently the Ellie Gasper, has decided to go up the roads. Is that Emmerich Mass trying to go as well? It is. Bit of a strange move by those guys. So still 40k to go. The breakaway are at the road, but we are down to 100 riders in their group. And look at our guys' energy. Gasper already out the back after that early move. This climb coming up next is going to be the most important. And despite the minus day, we do hold on just about to the main group. We do have a couple of riders who just attacked. I think Molima was one of them. He is now caught, though. So now we're over that climb, do we have a chance? Oh, and David Godu launches on this hill. Shall I try and follow David Godu here? I don't think I really have the energy. I'll try a little kick anyway, just to see if we can create some gaps here. 19k still to go, remember. Uh, let's try and sit in this group. Now, hopefully we've created a little bit of a selection. Down to 30 riders here. Eight riders now at the front. But currently it's all back together. 37 riders. I'm just trying to sit in the wheels and hold on for a potential sprint or attack over the final two tiny little climbs. And here we go, Clermont Champoussin is attacking for AG2R. I'll follow Chris Nierlands here. We are literally clinging onto the front of the race. This race day is not helpful if we had any type of race day. I'd feel like I could win this race. Eight k to go though, we are literally just clinging on. However, we do have a selection. Could this be a top 10 in the bag? Seven k to go uh, and we do have 40 seconds back to that group. I'm following Godu. Apparently it's the right wheel as well. So we have more and more attacks. Oh, this is so frustrating. Coming into Livron, 
I can tell that we don't have the energy to compete for this race. I'm just trying to follow Patrick Conrad's wheel. Uh, maybe not because we're not there at the moment. Let's follow Gregor Mulberger as David Godu is going to attack over the top into the final 2k. Can he get away though? Not really. And we are in with a chance here. Let's sprint for the line. Can we get a podium or something? It's not going to be. And it is going to be a victory for Jacopo Mosca. Cool to see him getting a win. And we can't even beat any of these guys in that sprint. It's going to be a top 10. Nothing more. Oh man, that race day really was annoying. That was a race we could have won on a good day. But we have to settle for ninth place. And it's been a troubling start to our time at Total Energies. You have to say, I guess at least... We won the team classification. I joke, who cares about that? But I do care that we are 10 points away from level 18. And as soon as we progress into March 2023, we get the upgrade to level 18. Only a skill point again. We have to wait for level 19 to hopefully improve that mountain stat. And I think we've been struggling for our training and our tiredness. So again, I'm going to apply this to uh, the training level two upgrades. So our 14th race day of the season is our first World Tour race day, and that is ahead of plenty more. The, the races we've had are the races we should have won. Now we head into the territory of going against the top opposition in the world. Strada Bianca is first of our little couple of weeks in Italy before Torreno and San Remo. This is the last race of today's episode. Let's go for a good result. And by the way, looking ahead on our schedule, I mentioned it in the previous episode. You guys basically have said in the comments, I think it's best to do one Grand Tour in this season. And with that in mind, I think will go to the Giro d'Italia. That's going to be our Grand Tour this season. Colbrelli, Jasper Sturven and Gianni Moscon are the guys to watch, apparently, in Strada Bianca this year. Pretty cool to see this is our first race with the Slovak champion, Peter Sagan. Looking brilliant in that jersey as well, I must say. But I do want to join the breakaway today. I know it can be quite powerful at Strada. And in addition to that, I have been given the carte blanche as well by our director with everyone else working for King Peter Sagan. Well, here we go. The breakaway have now formed up the road. We have eight riders alongside us. Ben O'Connor, Matteo Fabro is here as well. Brandon McNulty, fairly strong group. So we are now getting into the business end of this race. And look at our energy compared to our teams this is the advantage of going in the breakaway at Strada. And remember guys, we do have 73 cobbles, so the gravel sectors are where we can definitely try and turn the screw on some of these riders in the breakaway if we want to. Well, there are just 24 riders left in the main group behind with Peter Sagan present and seven still left in the breakaway, ourselves included, of course. We have 90 seconds or 80 seconds on them right now. Oh, and Ben O'Connor has crashed, so unlucky for him. Connor Brown has lost contact as well, and we're down to five at the front, still with one minute 20 on Sagan's group. And so at this point, I'm pretty sure an astute tactic would be not to work in this group and cover off every single move because we do have Sagan, our team leader, waiting behind. So I'm going to follow Nathan Haas, who has attacked and not really going to work with him either because he has to pull. We have Sagan waiting behind. Oh, and Haas attacks again. He is strong today. He is very, very strong today. I need to give my all to follow him. And I think he is going to drop us here. Nathan Haas has dropped us. Let's do everything we can to stay with him. And we just about are on the Colle Pinzuto. But guys, we still have 40 seconds to the remnants of the breakaway and just seven riders are left in that group with Mara Schmid there, Sagan, Colbrelli, Muscon, a few others. And again, I don't really need to work with Haas, or do I? So we've now had an attack by Rob Stannard behind. They're 45 seconds behind. I'm just going to try and follow Haas still, trying to play it cool here. And in fact, this could be a good point to try and go all in and try and counter-attack Nathan Haas, who looks completely done. We have abused Nathan Haas here. He's been pulling us along. And here come the rest of the breakaway. There are the peloton as well. We have 10k to go. This is our bid for victory at Strada Bianca. Let's go Aero and try and hold on. What a ride this would be if we hold on. Haas is 37 seconds behind and the Peloton with Sagan still over a minute down here. We are holding on here. We're clinging on. We have 35 seconds. There is Sagan in group two. Moscon trying to pull them back into it. This could be heartbreak for us. This could be absolute heartbreak as we enter the final two kilometers here at Strada 
Bianca, let's go up to maybe 90. Can I do that? 25 seconds is our advantage over the chasing group. I'm not going to dare look behind. Let's go up to 99. Give our all. That's too hard. We can't hold on. Here comes Steuven. Here comes the rest. And we are going to be caught, are we? Are we going to be caught? Are we going to hold on? Are we going to win? Strada Bianca. Let's see. Across the line. It is so close in Siena. But we have won. Strada Bianca, what a victory. Stoyv in second, Madawas in third. Sagan was in the top five and we played our card absolutely perfectly there. What an epic race that was. What a way to win our first race in Total Energy's colours as well. And what a way to get our time racing alongside the great Peter Sagan underway. We had the chemistry, we worked together despite not being in the same groups. I sat on Nathan Haas and that was absolutely perfect. Nathan Haas, I thank you for your service today. And I thank you for being a Toto Energy's domestique today because without him pulling us along and us relying on him and then attacking him as he had nothing left, we wouldn't have won today. So that was a crucial, crucial part to our strategy. What a race. And we get massive points. Look at that, 150 points for our first win, top three or top five at world's tour level. And if we click here, 88 more points are coming our way and we are almost at level 19 already. Oh my, what a haul right there. And what a way to conclude today's episode. We didn't even have a top 10 before the Royal Bernard Drome Classic and then we win Strada Bianca. Guys, if you enjoyed, smash that like button down below. Drop a sub if you're new to the channel as well. Working our way slowly towards 5K hopefully. And I will see you guys in the next one.